You know, I think that the silence that we experienced in this case from the media, uh, particularly when it came to Professor Tracy's rights, was deafening. I mean, all you saw in the press was uh, FAU's position over and over and over again. And that has a very uh, tremendous impact on not just um, those who are, you know, reading the papers or watching TV, which I don't understand why people, people still do that anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, the impact it had on the jury, uh, which, who was certainly swayed by, uh, you know, this barrage of demonization and, and marginalization and, and really uh, reshaping the facts. Um, and, and that to me was one of the most alarming aspects of the, the Tracy trial. Uh, you know, we see a lot of cases um, get wall-to-wall -wall coverage. You know, if it's something that the media likes, you know, they'll certainly pay attention to it and uh, they'll do what they can to give as much information about what's happening in, in, in the process and in court uh, and on the record. And we spent a lot of, a lot of time trying to educate uh, reporters and, you know, mainstream, uh, you know, um, media people um, about what was going on. Uh, and about the, the record, which is there. I mean, any of them could access the, the federal uh, court system docket online and pull the, pull the emails and, the, and uh, look at the record, you know? And there was really minimal, if any, effort by most of the people who were purporting to cover this case to actually report what was going on. And in fact, we would have some uh, really great evidence and really, uh, you know, great for for Professor Tracy and, and, and really showed uh, just how uh, dishonest and uh, deceitful uh, the administrators of this university were being uh, at trial and uh, you know some of these exhibits behind me really show um, what was really going on behind the scenes and none of this was was even mentioned I mean it, it was almost like uh, witnessing uh, uh, you know bullying by uh, whoever it is, and the media is right there kicking you, <laughs> kicking you, or kicking the, the victim, uh, joining in, you know, and, and uh, you know, he had it coming. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is to me absurd, uh, particularly uh, like, you know, my co counsel said, uh, from a, a, an industry that has benefited greatly from the First Amendment. And when you look at, uh, Whenever the industry or you know the press is under fire for doing something, whether they're sued for defamation or what have you, you know what's the first thing that they say? Freedom of speech, freedom of the press. You know, but where was Professor Tracy's freedom of speech? Where was his right to blog without being uh, retaliated against? And not just by being fired. That was just one aspect of the retaliation. I mean, they changed his, his course schedules to conflict with his child care duties. Didn't hear that in the press. They uh, canceled uh, classes that he had without explanation, classes that were being offered. Uh, you know, where was that in the press? There was uh, letters from constitutional rights groups that were condemning FAU for what they did and what they were planning to do. Where was that in the press? You know, where was the, the audio? Uh, this audio, which is one of the most important pieces of, ev of evidence in this case. You literally have uh, faculty members and administrators on record just months before Professor Tracy's fired for not turning in his outside activity form. And you have the, the, the individual who fires Professor Tracy, who, who took the stand at trial and said that uh, James knew, you know, Professor Tracy knew what we expected, and he, he understood the policy. You have her on record saying the form that he's fired for not filling out completely or turning in on time needs clarity. She says this on the record. And this is in response to faculty members, including uh, political science professors who teach constitutional <laughs> law, asking the university to stop threatening faculty members with discipline under this policy until they can clarify it for everyone so that they understand it. I mean, this policy is very confusing, it's very vague, uh, and it was used in a way that it should never have been used. And everybody knew that. Everybody knew it at trial, uh, except for the jury who wasn't allowed to. And I think that um, 
and I'm hopeful that the the higher courts will look at the evidence and and apply the law 